the first ever digestible defense where we're taking a really brief look at answers to some of the biggest questions that Christians get asked. Today, since it's Easter, we're going to look at the question, can you prove that Jesus rose from the dead? Why is this such an important question? 1 Corinthians 15, Paul says, if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. And then he goes on to say that if it's only for this life that we have hope in Christ, we Christians are of all people most to be pitied. In other words, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then Christians everywhere are completely wasting their time and wasting their lives. But can I prove that Jesus rose from the dead? No. But I believe a lot of things that I can't prove. For example, I can't prove that the earth's not flat. But I believe that it's round because that's the best explanation of all the evidence that's available to me. So what we need to do, if we want to decide whether the resurrection is true, is to look at the evidence surrounding it and decide what the most likely explanation is for that evidence. To start us off then, we're going to look at five pieces of information that generally everybody agrees on. Number one, Jesus of Nazareth was a real person and he was crucified by the Romans in Jerusalem. Two, his tomb was being guarded by a detachment of at least four soldiers, probably Roman. Some people think there could be up to 16 to 50 people. Number three, he was buried in the tomb of a guy called Joseph of Arimathea, who was a prominent member of the Jewish council at the time. Four, his disciples afterwards went around preaching that he had risen from the dead and they started in Jerusalem, the place where it happened. Five, the Jewish and Roman authorities went to great lengths to stop the message of the resurrection of Jesus from spreading. Now let's look at some of the theories that people have come up with to try and explain the events surrounding Jesus' death. I would divide them into one of two categories. Either Jesus was still in the tomb or the tomb was empty. If Jesus was still in the tomb, then we have to say one of three things. Either the disciples made the whole thing up or the disciples genuinely believed Jesus had risen from the dead because they were tricked in some way or they all hallucinated it. The third option is that the women who discovered that Jesus' body wasn't there went to the wrong tomb. All those three theories, Jesus is still in the grave. These three theories are probably the easiest to argue against because nobody has ever been able to explain why the authorities who didn't want the disciples to go around preaching the resurrection didn't just get Jesus' body out of the tomb and present it to show that he was actually dead. Everyone knew where the tomb was and it would have been easy for the authorities to produce Jesus' body and prove that the whole thing was a lie before it even started. So anyone who wants to seriously argue against Jesus rising from the dead, the main thing they have to explain is the empty tomb. So what are some of the explanations for the empty tomb then? One is that the authorities stole the body to stop the disciples from getting it so that they couldn't claim that there was a res resurrection. But the problem with that is, when they started to claim that there was a resurrection, then the authorities still could have just produced the body that they'd stolen for themselves. Another theory is that Jesus was never dead when he was buried in the tomb. He was just unconscious. For this to be true, Jesus would have had to have been beaten to within an inch of his life, crucified, stabbed in the side with a spear, covered in spices and then embalmed, put in a tomb with no food or water for three days. Then he comes round, gets himself out of all that, pushes away a two-ton stone, gets past the guards, walks miles to find the disciples. Probably not. That just leaves probably the most convincing theory, which is that the disciples were the ones who stole the body and that's why the tomb was empty. And then they lied about the whole thing and made up their own religion. Actually, this is the explanation that the Jewish leaders are reported to have come up with. Matthew 28, it says, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priest everything had happened. And the chief priest gave the soldiers a large sum of money and told them, you are to say his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. Why I find this theory so hard to believe is because if there were a minimum of four guards, what are the chances of all four guards falling asleep at the same time, even though that was something that there would have been a severe punishment for in the Roman guard. And even if they did fall asleep all at the same time, how did the disciples get past them, move a two-ton stone out of the way and get Jesus' body out of there without waking anybody up? No. If the disciples stole the body of Jesus, they would have had to overpower the guards in order to do it. If they did overpower the guards, that's a pretty impressive transformation, given that days earlier, these cowardly disciples were abandoning Jesus and hiding away so they didn't get into trouble. All of a sudden, they've decided to get together and take on a load of Roman guards to get Jesus' body back. Seems unlikely, but 
Imagine they did do that. We still have one really, really big thing to explain. After the events of the resurrection of Jesus, the disciples were completely transformed. They went from being cowardly men who were hiding to boldly going around preaching that Jesus has risen from the dead. And for doing this, every single one of them was persecuted and ultimately ended up being brutally killed because of the message that they were going around telling everyone that Jesus had risen from the dead. But if they stole the body, that means that they did that and put up with all those things, knowing that the whole thing was a lie and they could have easily just renounced it. But if they genuinely believed it, there's no possible way that they could be the people who stole the body. For me, it's the courage and convictions of the disciples that is the most convincing evidence that Jesus actually rose from the dead. Now, if somebody did steal the body, whether it was the disciples or somebody else, we still have to explain all the claimed appearances of the risen Jesus after he died. Especially the one where Paul claims that Jesus appeared to more than 500 people at the same time. And as he points out, when he made this claim, most of those people were still alive. So they would have easily been able to contradict him and show the whole thing to be a lie. See, Christianity is based on actual historical events that can be verified and scrutinised. For me, the only logical explanation for the empty tomb and for the transformation of the disciples and the subsequent appearances of Jesus after he died is that Jesus actually rose from the dead. And if I'm right, which I might well be, then listen to what Jesus said that means for anyone who becomes a Christian. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? We are the Gate Church.